Hello fellow beekeepers, I'm Carl Korshkin. In the last several years, small hive beetles have infested our hives in central Missouri. So I decided it was time that I develop a bottom board to control these pests. So this is the, the bottom board that I developed. Conceptually, it is much like several of the other bottom boards that have screen on them, except you're gonna find that this one has very, several unique features. First of all, I've experimented with this for about the last several months and it does kill lots of beetles. Secondly, this bottom board can be used year round because it um, has so many features that I will show you towards the end of this video. Secondly, eight frame and 10 frame hives fit perfectly on this bottom board. This bottom board is very easy to construct and I will show you how I do that step by step when we go down into the shop. And this bottom board uses standard components. So this entire bottom board has basically been built around a half size cookie sheet that is available at every Walmart store for $10. You can buy them in restaurant supplies stores for even less. The only modification of this tray is that I pop rivet on a pull handle. The second most important feature of this bottom board is the screen. This is number seven screen, which is hard to acquire. But I tested number six, and some small bees can get through number six. And I tested number eight, Number eight will kill beetles, but I want to make you aware that small hive beetles are sexually dimorphic and the females are larger than the males. So I have a concern that male beetles will fall through a number eight screen, but, number, but the females will not fall through a number eight. So number seven is the perfect screen mesh for a small hive beetle trap. As I said, it is hard to find, but I have found a source, and that is Clifton Murphy, who owns Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks. And I'm gonna put Clifton's contact information up here. The advantage to buying it from Clifton is that you can get what you need without having to buy an entire roll of specialty wire. Okay, as I said, this bottom board can be used underneath a 10 frame or an eight frame hive. Here is a 10 frame Langstroth per perimeter. And it would fit on this bottom board just like this. Now, 89% of the hive opening is above this screen. And 83% is above the tray. So that is plenty of surface area to kill lots of small hive beetles. One feature that I add to this 10 frame configuration is that I put slots here on these rims. We put plastic strips in here, but I call beetle diverters. When your frames of your brood box above this bottom board come down, they close off the top surface of these deflector strips and as the bees chase the beetles, the beetles fall into the screen and are killed in an oil bath. On an eight frame hive, you have 100% of the hive opening above the screen and 96% above the tray. Again, more than enough to kill thousands of small hive beetles. Okay, I'm gonna go just quickly through the construction. As you see, it is two by six lumber. I put a rabbit joint here on the corner. I cut approximately three eighths inch furring strips, and these furring strips determine the height of your entrance into the hive. So you can make those as 
thick as you want to determine the entrance height. I prefer to keep my hives very tight. Underneath we have cleats, two cleats that the tray rests on. And one feature that you can't see is there's just a piece of a cleat between this tree, the screen and the tray on the, front, on the front side of the hive. Now if this tray does not fit flush up against the screen, I will put in a strip of plastic that I staple on that cleat. And when this slides in there, it pushes the screen up tight against the tray so that bees do not have any chance of getting in the oil and drowning themselves. The other thing I do is I take these strips and when, there, when the tray has been filled with oil, I slip in these to further cinch the tray up against the wire. I mentioned that this bottom board can be used year round. So I wanna show you some of the features that I think are unique. So obviously, with the tray up and oil in the tray, this will kill beetles. If you want to ventilate your hive during the summer, you can pull the tray out as much as you want. You may have to provide a cover here to keep the rain from going in, but you can ventilate the front, or you always have this one inch strip of ventilation in the back of your hive that will flow up inside their hive behind your frames. So in the winter, you have several options. You can simply turn the tray upside down, slide it in, and you will have a partial screen bottom board. You would have ventilation going up the sides, insides, on both sides and ends of your frames. The area right above your cluster will, should not have any direct air moving through it. If you wanted to go uh, completely with a bottom board, you could easily slip in a one inch thick piece of polystyrene foam sheathing or any kind of three quarter inch plywood. So this entire bottom board can be built from this one piece of lumber. And the screen wire, the tray, and approximately 12 screws. So what we're going to do next is go down in the shop and I'm going to show you how I construct this bottom board step by step. Okay, so I've cut my 2x6 piece of lumber into three pieces. These are 20 and 3 quarters and 16 and a quarter. So the first thing I want to do is cut a rabbit on this 16 and a quarter inch piece. We're now going to make three rips on these three pieces of two by six. And to do that efficiently, I have templates here. So when I put this template between the fence and the blade, it will cut off one quarter inch of the two by six to give me a square edge to work off of. I will then use this template to measure off the width of the shimming strips, which will determine the width of the entrance. And finally, I will use this template to cut off a three-quarter inch cleat that goes inside the dado grooves that we will cut last.
Next, we're going to drill some pilot holes for the screws. So from here on, it's very easy to assemble the bottom board. You just need to make sure all of your trimmed edges are to the top. And normally I would glue these. So now I have these two cleats and I have cut the ends off so that they will be flush on what's going to be the front of the hive. And you just add glue and set them in to the dado grooves. So then this piece that we cut off of the 16 and a quarter inch board will go right here and you adjust the, the front so that it is perfectly flush on the edges and that will give you exactly a 16 and a quarter. Then we will eventually add these cleats and you can see I have a nice rabbited corner here for a good fit. And this area right here becomes the entrance to the hive. This is a 14 and a half by 20 inch piece of number seven wire. And it's going to mount on this piece right here. You mount th this leading edge straight with the rabbit joint. So now we have the screen on the back furring strip and I'm going to, you align it on one side first, make sure it's flush. And then if necessary, you adjust the width here. So we have this piece from all of the ripping that we did earlier. It's very versatile. You could actually put it into these dado grooves or you could cut it off and use it for a shim down here on the bottom. But here's a piece of scrap and I've stapled on a piece of plastic that's about um, a tenth of an inch in thickness and I, we put this right here in the groove. So those are the basic details about my bottom board. If you have any questions, please contact me.